is December 16th, 2021, nine days before Christmas. Thanks for watching the Calvary Briefing. These opening sentences of an article grabbed my attention this week. In a season that focuses on gifts, I often overlook one of the most priceless ones. It's a gift I've dreaded, refused, and longed to give back. But it has been invaluable in shaping me and drawing me to Jesus. It is the unwelcome gift of suffering. The article is written by Vanitha Reisner, and the title is The Unwelcome Gift of Suffering. Suffering doesn't seem like a very good gift when we go through a book of the Old Testament by the name of Job, we find that Job's friends didn't think that suffering was much of a gift at all. And yet, we find that in the Bible, God uses suffering for some great purposes among His people. One of the things that we can often forget is that comfort can make us forget. In the book of Deuteronomy, God used the wilderness experience of his people so that they could learn to trust him with all of their needs and live by his word. In the book of Deuteronomy, the eighth chapter, God addressed his people and said this, take care lest you forget the Lord your God, lest when you have eaten and are full and have built good houses and live in them, and when your herds and flocks multiply and your silver and gold is multiplied and all that you have is multiplied, then your heart will be lifted up and you forget the Lord your God who led you through the great and terrifying wilderness with its fiery serpents and scorpions and thirsty ground where there was no water. In essence, God told his people that in times of plenty, they needed to reflect back on the past times of struggle and discomfort and suffering so that they could remember how he had met them during those times. One of the things that we often forget is that during times of suffering, we sometimes pray some of our greatest prayers. As we think about one of the promises of God and God's Word, it is not that we will have <clears throat> thriving ministries, absolutely wonderful marriages, and perfectly obedient children, and fulfillment in our jobs. What we do find is that God promises to be with us in our trouble. And Vanitha Reisner writes this, God has promised to be with us in trouble, which is a far greater blessing than the absence of trouble. In times of difficulty and suffering, God feels nearer. His Hugs around us seem tighter. Uh, Joseph Parker was a British pastor in the mid-1800s, and he speaks of the value of the great and terrible wilderness experiences in our lives. He says, The great and terrible wilderness was the place where our great prayers were prayed. You do not know what you said, in that long night of wilderness and solitude, the words were taken down. If you could read them now, you would be surprised at their depth, their richness, and unction. You owe your very life to the wilderness which made you afraid. Suffering deepens our faith. Beneath the Reisner writes, I owe the depth of my faith and my love for Christ to the wilderness that made me afraid. Sometimes talking about suffering can sort of be a downer. Talking about suffering can be something that people immediately zone out of. 
But suffering is a reality for each one of us. Now, there are varying degrees of suffering. On the way here today, I received a phone call, and suffering was on the other end of that phone call. Uh, Sometimes the suffering is a big deal that takes months and months to get over. Sometimes the suffering is something small that takes an hour or two to forget. But suffering from God's hand is always a gift for us in some way. One of the helpful analogies that I found in this article had to do with wrapping paper. This is the Christmas season. We are thinking about soon gathering around Christmas trees with brightly decorated, color-coordinated boxes. And what happens is that as we open those gifts, the wrapping paper is torn and crinkled and laid in a pile. It's easy to look at an unopened gift that someone else is holding in their hands and looking at your crinkled pile of paper and saying, oh, I wish I had that brightly decorated box. But the point of Christmas gifts and the point of wrapping Christmas gifts is not the wrapping paper and the ribbons. The point is the gift inside. And in spite of the fact that some of us look at our lives as crimpled, crinkled, torn up wrapping paper, we have a gift inside from God, the gift of suffering. I want to just read the last sentences of Vanitha Reisner's article, and it's under the heading, The Gift of Suffering. We'll delight in Christ endlessly in heaven and encountering his beauty and comfort on earth gives us a small foretaste of that eternal happiness. For me, experiencing God in my suffering is the closest I've come to pure joy. Suffering has taken my eyes off of the temporary and fixed them on the eternal. My faith is not theoretical. It's not just a set of doctrines and principles that others have adopted. It is personal and real. As my outer nature is wasting away and my paper has ripped, I have glimpsed a weight of glory beyond all comparison. This reminder to all of us. So this Christmas, if your paper is ragged and torn, don't despair. Look carefully to find the gift of supreme value that can never be taken away and will last throughout eternity. It is the matchless gift of our Savior, who is Christ the Lord. Thank you.